I'm standing on the oldest crossing point over one of the most iconic rivers in Britain. So where are today's show? I'm helping a couple of expats return home, and we've got a great selection of properties to entice them back. As long as we avoid a key word. Something a bit more cozy in here. Peter doesn't like the word cozy. It means a bit off to me. But at another property, there's a U-turn. Isn't that place? Nice and cozy in here. Yeah, in a good way. I'm in the Cotswolds, and this is Radcote Bridge, which dates back to the 12th century and crosses the Thames. And it was here that Henry Bolingbroke took his first major step towards becoming Henry the Fourth King of England. Now, at the time, he's being hunted down by his cousin Richard II. And in order to stop the attacking army, Henry smashed through the middle section of that bridge and defeated them. Twelve years later, Henry went on to overthrow cousin Richard and was eventually crowned king. And as you'll see, this beautiful limestone forms a theme throughout the wonderful-looking towns and villages of the Cotswolds. The Cotswolds is an area of outstanding natural beauty that lies mainly within the counties of Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire, but stretches into four other counties. As one of the most unspoiled regions of England, the area is world famous for its golden-coloured limestone villages, gentle undulating hills and scenic river valleys, making it a very desirable place to live. The best vantage point is from Cleve Hill, the highest peak in the Cotswolds, some 330 metres above sea level. And on a good day, you can see as far as the Black Mountains in Wales. It was the wool trade during the Middle Ages that made the Cotswolds prosperous. That wealth has left its mark in the form of towns such as Burford, with its pretty high street leading downhill to a crossing point across the river Windrush. Today, the Cotswolds is still favoured by the rich and famous, all drawn to the harmonious mix of stunning countryside and beautiful properties. Now, it's no secret that house prices within the Cotswolds are a country mile away from house values outside of the area. The average price of a detached home here comes in at around £441,000. That's £184,000 above the national figure. Now, in order to reduce this huge premium for living here, you're better off travelling further out. And two great examples are Tetbury and Nailsworth heading west into Gloucestershire. Now, both are on the periphery of this area, but they still retain that Cotswold feel. And heading south, you're better off going the other side of the M4 into Wiltshire will also be rewarded with better access. However, today's buyers do want to be in the heart of the Cotswolds. So let's meet them. Eight years ago, Peter and Alfie moved from Swindon to Eichelberg in Germany for Peter's work in the electrical engineering industry. Now that he's retired, they both feel the time is right to return to British soil and they're checking into a hotel in the Cotswolds to begin their hunt for a new home closer to their grown-up children and five grandchildren. We've been away from home and family a long time now, and we, we think it's time to go back and see the fa more of the family. We've missed a lot of years there. We've had a great time abroad, but I think we just know it's the right time to come back to the UK. The current home is a four-bedroom property in the south of Germany, but despite its hillside location, there are drawbacks. It's a beautiful place. It really is beautiful. But we have to get into the car to go anywhere because we're sort of up in the mountain. So I want to go to a place where I can just open the door and walk to a shop, buy a paper and have a cup of coffee and walk back. Peter, on the other hand, wants more peace in his retirement. The reason we want to leave Eichelberg is, you know, when we first went, it was nice and quiet, but it, it's more and more houses have been built up. And um, to be frank, there's no seclusion in my garden. I like to sit in the garden and do things without people being able to just overlook me. And I would just like a bit of privacy and a bit more quietness. Moving to the Cotswolds has been on Alfie's mind for a while. It's a very picturesque, it's a beautiful part of the world, and it's sunnier than it is up north. But I used to go to university in Coventry as a mature student, and I used to travel from Swindon to Coventry, and I have to go through the Cotswolds, and I used to think as I was driving along the fast way bit, I, I would like to live here. It just, it's just very nice. Peter and Alfie have enjoyed their German experience, but after a decade, there are some things they've really missed. I never eat fish and chips. <laughs> Very rarely. Chips. But there are times when I would just love a bag of fish and chips. 
And when they finally return to the UK, they'll be keeping themselves busy. For me, what I would like to do is, uh, first thing, is join a good golf course, a nice big golf course. There's a lot of social activities in the golf course for me. I love photography. I'm not very good at it, but I love photography. Um, and I need more lessons. So I would like to sort of develop sort of artistic skills like the photography. I would also like to do patchwork. But I have to say, the other thing I'd like to do is start cycling again. And it's flatter. I know there are hills here, but it can... Where we live, it's very hilly. All that's left is to find out how much money they've got to play with for their great British homecoming. The budget for the move is £750,000. Peter and Alfie would like to be within an hour from their grandchildren in Swindon. So we're concentrating our Cotswolds property search with that in mind. I've come to their hotel on a misty morning to discuss their wish list. So after living in Germany, you're moving back to the UK. Yeah. Not to your hometown of Newcastle then? No. Before we went to Germany, we lived in uh, Wiltshire for 21 years. What? And three of the grandchildren live in Wiltshire. OK. So the house itself? Mm. I take it you want some Cotswold stone? Yeah, Cotswold stone would be nice, but it's not necessary. We like contemporary insides, that's the main thing. Yeah. Bright and light. We don't like lots of dark rooms and small windows. We need space as well. You need space? Yeah. yeah. Light and bright. You could be after maybe a modern property then? Mm -hmm. Yes. Modern's OK, yes. Right. I would like a big kitchen. It's yeah. the centre the, or the hub of the house. Yes. That's what I would like. OK. And it has to have more than one bathroom. More than one bathroom? One yes. for the guests, OK. No, one uh, for him, one for me. And then perhaps one for the guests. Yeah. <laughs> How many bedrooms? One each? I <laughs> know, <laughs> oh, we're still into one bedroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many bedrooms then, minimum? Three minimum. At least three, yeah. Finally, outside space. Outside mm. space, I, I like gardening. In fact, I spend a lot of time in the garden as well if I'm not golfing. Well, Alfie's in the kitchen, I prefer to be in the garden. So a nice size garden, you know, half an acre, even an acre is not a problem for me. Right, so let's talk budget. We've thought about £750,000 as a sort of the, the budget figure that we'd like to, to go and spend. For the best possible house in the world, you're going to squeeze we could, could you squeeze it? Yeah, we could squeeze we, a little bit. We could squeeze. If there's the best house in the world we've ever seen, obviously we'd be prepared to spend a bit more. Make no mistake, that's a really healthy budget. Mm. But it's... But it's here. It's an expensive part of the world. I stress there may well be compromises here. Yeah. Let's get started this way. OK, thanks. OK. For a maximum budget of £750,000, Peter and Alfie want a property with a light and spacious contemporary interior, and they're not too concerned about the age and style. Alfie would like a large kitchen for entertaining the family, and they'd both like a bathroom each. The house should have at least three bedrooms, a reasonably sized garden for Peter, and Alfie would like to be close to a village or a town. We've lined up three impressive properties for our buyers to view, and at each one, I'll be asking them to guess the price at the end. Our mystery house is a revelation in more ways than one. For our first property, we're travelling 15 miles north of Swindon to the hamlet of Driffield in Gloucestershire. The closest amenities can be found in South Cerny, around two miles away. Located in the heart of the Cotswolds, this busy village has a post office and news agents, three pubs and a church, and there's an 18-hole golf course nearby. Just a short drive away, our first house, very much a traditional Cotswold property, awaits us. Right then, here we go, with our first property. Let me tell you what you get. You get, from that building, yeah. uh -huh. all the way across, to all that you see, really. Yeah. And it's detached. It's OK. It's yeah, not no. something I would go for. Oh, right, OK. I have Tell to say why. that. Yeah. It just looks... It's very oldie-worldy. Yeah. First thing Alfie would probably be thinking of, I know I am, is how light is it inside? Yeah. Because, you know, the windows aren't massive. And no. I'm just wondering whether it'll be a bit... Dark. ...darker inside for, for what we like. Let's yeah. go inside and see what you think of what's in there. OK, okay. I'm looking That's forward right. to this. Not the best start I've had to a house tour, but this pretty converted barn built from Cotswold stone is typical of the area. And I'm keen that Peter and Alfie get a real sense of what's on offer in their price range in this expensive part of the world. 
We're heading to the kitchen first, which is located at the far end of the property. So, tell me what you think of this kitchen. No, I think it's too small for what we're looking for. Too small, too low. In fact, the ceiling is far too low for me. And we have family that are well over sort of six foot six five. Foot tall. How much more size do you need from your kitchen? How much more? Double. I think double. I would right. like, not what I'm going to get, but okay. what I would like. This is not the hub of the house. It's pushed to the side. Let's go to the living room now and tell me what you think of that, all right? Can yeah, I just I'm squeeze through here? Thanks. Okay. Although the kitchen might be too small for Peter and Alfie's needs, there's an adjoining utility room for all the white goods and a workshop beyond that. So you've got a good-sized dining room here. Yeah. Keep walking through. Okay. And then something a bit more cosy in here. Oh, yeah. What's that word cosy? It's a famous word cosy. Peter doesn't like the word cosy. It means little to me. <laughs> it's not that little, is it? It's, it's an okay size just for a sitting room. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, and the fire is quite nice. I like the fire, please. Yeah. It's got higher ceilings as well. Yeah, the ceilings are a bit better, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah but you're not going to buy a house that you think's no, okay. No, no. No. So what's, what's making it okay and not lovely? I think, for me, what it is, it's just very... It's a nook and cranny house. Right. Which is nice, or can be nice. But I'm just figuring out how you could change it around. Let's go upstairs. We can go from there. Okay. okay. okay right. In total, this house has four bedrooms. They're all of a decent size, with exposed timbers and plenty of cupboard space. There are also two family bathrooms, something Peter and Alfie were keen on. Furthermore, the owners have made use of a space on the landing to create an open study area, which just leaves the master bedroom. Righty ho. So. Come on in. So what do we have here? Yeah, it's low ceilings again. Yeah. There's the slopes, isn't it? Claustrophobic comes yeah. to mind. Yeah. Really? Yes. I think it's the it's shape this... of the room and it's not enough light for me and it's just makes it just feel like an old cottage. It is. Yeah. I suppose it's, 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 it's a converted <laughs> barn, but yeah, yeah. It, essentially yeah. that's what it is, yeah. and it's you don't yeah. like that then. In the moment, I'm thinking I could change it all, but that's what I've got to do for it to live here. To change it to all. To change it yeah, all. Has, uh, Let's go outside. I'll show you a bit more of the gardens, and we'll talk about price. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get your thinking caps on. At least Peter and Alfie are being clear about their feelings towards our first property. There's still the garden to see, and maybe we can claw something back. It's south-facing, bordered by Cotswold stone walls, with views across neighbouring fields. There is also a large gravel driveway and a stone and timber outbuilding, which could be converted subject to planning permission. So, Peter, the garden is your domain. Yes. So, tell me, what do you think? Um, well, the actual overall size is not too bad. So, how much do you think this house is on the market for? Alfie. Oh, it's a bit difficult. I'm not very good at this. Um, I think on the market, probably seven, seven hundred thousand. All right, I Peter. I would think I'd go a bit higher than Alfie. Go about seven hundred and twenty thousand. Right. Right. Well, it's on the market for offers around seven hundred and forty-five thousand okay. pounds. That's after a price reduction. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, it, dear. It's worth bearing in mind. You know, for me to remind you as much as anything else that. This is not a cheap part of the world. When you go back into the house, have a good look around, and then I'll meet you whenever you're done. Okay, All right? Yeah, that's okay. lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, a bit of a reality check there. Our first house is priced at £745,000, just £5,000 below Peter and Alfie's maximum budget. It's a former barn built out of traditional Cotswold stone. Converted in the 1980s, the accommodation includes a kitchen and breakfast room and a twin aspect sitting room. Upstairs, there are four bedrooms and two bathrooms. The garden is south facing, and the property is two miles away from a busy village. It's a very nice house, very nice property, stands on a nice plot, but it's not the type of house for Peter or I. It's not got the what we're looking for, I don't think. From my point of view, the size of the plot itself was okay. 
It's a country house and a country place, but it's not for me or Alfie, I think. So, all done inside, both of you? Yes, thank yes, you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Onward and upward. Brilliant. In the early 20th century, the Cotswolds became an important centre for the arts and crafts movement. In 1902, a group of craftsmen led by designer C.R. Ashby arrived here in Chipping Camden from London. At the time, the Cotswold town was rather run down, and Ashby and his followers were happy to make it their home and pay cheaper rent. One of those designers was George Hart, who set up this workshop to make silverware. Fast forward a hundred years, and this artistic tradition is being carried out by his great-grandson, Julian Hart. Since Peter and Alfie are keen to master new creative skills, we sent them to try their hand at silversmithing. Well, this is one of the things to do. Cheese knife. That's mm. lovely. The handle itself is a hollow section. Mm. So we would sort of take a piece of silver like that, bend it round the tool. If you want to have a go, you can feel how tough it is to okay. try and bend it round. I'll have a try, thank you. <laughs> As well as advocating better working conditions for craftsmen, the arts and crafts movement placed emphasis on the value of materials and the revival of traditional skills and tools at the expense of heavy machinery. Is that really a hammer? Yeah, hammer? yeah. Okay. You just sort of just then tap it in with a with a mallet just to tighten okay. it all up around the top. Have a bash. <laughs> Very well, Julian. Yeah, don't be afraid to hit it. It won't hurt. The mallet's actually made of leather, so it won't mark the silver. I'm not really worried about the silver. It's my hands. <laughs> <laughs> it was workshops like this that transformed this market town. Jewelers, blacksmiths, cabinet makers, and printers all set up shop here. But the experiment was short-lived, and by 1908, many of the craftspeople left to go back to the towns. But not George Hart, and this workshop is the only one still in operation from that time. Okay. So, yeah. And then the next stage will be go to the forge and we've got to solder it all together. Okay. Join the ends up. I've noticed all the way around that all of these um, tools, really heavy yeah. tools, did they come up from London? Probably added a few, mm -hmm. but the majority were what were collected up in London back in the 1880s. What about the lighting here? You know, it's quite dark, is this? Well, I mean, that's essentially why we, all the, the benches are laid out under the windows, um, because you tend to prefer natural light to work. If you've got bright overhead lights, it just reflects off the silver and back into your eyes. Looks like, is that your original failing system? <laughs> that's the right? accounts department. Yeah. That's your accounts yeah. department? Yeah. I was supposed to keep your receipts for seven years, but the last time we had a clear out was 70 years ago. 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> Now that Peter and Alvi have discovered this historic gem on their potential doorstep, we need to forge ahead with our house search. For our second property, we're heading a mere seven miles south to Cricklade, which is just over the border into Wiltshire. Cricklade is a 9th century Saxon town with a wide high street along which you'll find a range of shops, pubs and restaurants. In 2011, the town was winner of the prestigious Britain in Bloom competition. It's also home to a nine-hole golf course, and we're making a detour there first. Now, I've heard a lot about you two being keen golfers. Time to find out how good you are. OK. OK. So, nearest the pin. Oh! Oh, no way! No way! No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I go from here? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. Surprise, surprise, I'm the loser here. But this is where I could pull it all back, I think, because property number two is right on top of this golf course. It's there. So there. that road? Down that drive. That is your drive. Close enough to a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. Let's have a look then. Come on. Come on. 
It's a thumbs up for location from Peter. But will we score a hole in one with the house itself? Now then, grand entrance. Yep, it yeah, is. It's very, very beautiful entrance. Yeah, excellent. I like the house, it's very nice. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's, it's uh, picturesque, isn't it? It was built around 1920, but then in 1980 odd, it was extended out this way. Okay. This house is bigger and squarer, so I'm hoping. Okay. That configuration will be more to your liking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's hope the kitchen's light. big as well for us. Yeah, it's yeah. the kitchen big. That's the important thing. Let's start there then. A more positive response to our second house. Perhaps Peter is still thinking about the distance to the first tee. Let's hope the kitchen is up to par. So, the all important kitchen, Alfie. Yeah. It's nice. It's a nice size. Good. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I just thought this was a nice big square room of which you can put your central island in. It's, it, it is nice, but it, it's not my decor. No, OK. I think enough. that's what it is. It's not my decor, but it is lovely. Very nice. No, I like it. I like it. Yeah. What do you think you might cook in here? No, no, no. No? <laughs> I'll show you the living room now. OK, okay. that'll be lovely. So here's your living room, all snug. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Nice oh, and bright. It is. It is a bright yes. room, actually, Ali. This is... Maybe a little bit smaller than the living room we saw at the yeah. first house. Yeah. Yes, you're right. So the size, it's the brightness that yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. yeah, I think the, the decor as well. Yeah. So if you like this room, which yeah. is good news for me, you'll love the room next door, which is currently a dining room. Mm -hmm. You've also got a what they have is a cinema room, the other side oh. of the house as well. Oh. Much oh. smaller. But... Mm -hmm. A cinema room sounds great. Yes. Yeah. So downstairs sounds like it could work for you. Yeah. It's looking like it, it is. Good. It can sort of work Definitely around. Definitely looking good. <laughs> Let's have a look upstairs. OK. Thank you very much. As well as the ready-made cinema room, there's also a study off the entrance hall. Upstairs there are five bedrooms. Three of those are doubles. One comes with ensuite bathroom, ideal for guests, and another has built-in cupboards. There are also two smaller bedrooms, as well as a large family bathroom, which just leaves the master suite. Now then, master bedroom. Yeah. Okay. Small. Yes. Yes, that's the first thing I mm -hmm. thought. You've got built-in wardrobes here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe mm -hmm. take this storage back. Yeah. Giving yourself a much bigger master bedroom. Yes. Would these be very deep? Would that give you much room? No, no, I'll show you. Look. I'm not. What about that, look? It's full on. Oh, that would give quite so a bit. So it makes a much bigger room. Make all the difference. Yeah. Now, a bed, yeah. this is a master because mm -hmm. it has... Well, one heck of an ensuite. Let me show you now. Ah, now that's Now we're talking. Now yes. we're talking. Okay. Now then. Whoa. Maybe we could have a party in here. <laughs> now, that's what I call an ensuite, definitely. It is nice. lovely. Let's show you outside, and then hopefully that could be the cherry on top of the cake. Okay. okay. Wonderful. I thought we'd lost them with the size of the master bedroom, but the ensuite has got us back on track. And they shouldn't be disappointed with the grounds. As well as the sweeping driveway and double garage and workshop at the front of the house, there's a total of one acre of gardens here, including a large lawn, a decked area ideal for outside entertaining, and there's even a built-in chess set. So, Peter, what are you going to do with all this garden? Mm. What am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to enjoy it, I think. Yeah. But uh, it's just really nice and different. It's not a bad package, is it? It's, it's not. It's a very good package. Great reactions, mm. but how much do you think this house is on the market for? I think I would go for £730,000. I was going to say, since the top of our limit, I would have said 750 750 Yeah, because it's beautiful. Well... Maybe more. It's on the market for offers around £760,000. £760,000. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, we'll have to think about it, because it's the... <sighs> Top end of our budget, and we'd have to do a lot of changes, like the kitchen and various things that we'd have to move. Yeah. Go back into the house and have a look at all the other rooms. OK. Walk the grounds. There's an acre of them. Mm -hmm. And then, well, it's the last thing we're seeing today, so I'll meet you whenever you're finished. Oh, OK, that's lovely. Slightly over budget. Dating back to the 1920s, the extended house retains many original features. The accommodation includes a large kitchen and breakfast room and two light living areas. There are five bedrooms upstairs, as well as one of the biggest ensuite bathrooms I've ever seen. 
The extensive gardens have fantastic views and the property is located on the edge of a golf course close to a popular town. Oh, Craig, this is nice. That's a oh, surprise, isn't it? That that's sweet. That's yeah. very good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Lovely. The layout is very nice. The kitchen, you don't feel as though you're tucked away. It is a big part of the house, which is good. The dining room, the fireplace in the dining room is absolutely superb. It's, so I think it's the original. The bedrooms are lovely. However, the master bedroom, I think, is a little bit small in comparison to the ensuite, which is huge, and you could have a lovely party in there. Outside space is fabulous. I like the fact that you had a, a big barbecue area and a nice area where there's a chess set set up, which would be great for the grandkids or myself even to play with them. <laughs> ah, yeah. all done inside? Hello, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I can say it's a lovely place to spend an evening. <laughs> Wish I could stay here even longer. Yeah. You just need a gin and tonic or something. Oh, like that'd that. be nice. <laughs> Maybe let's go back and get one, yeah, shall we? I'll, we I'll will. Finish. Lovely. It's the second day of our property search here in the Cotswolds, and on a budget of £750,000, we're helping expats Peter and Alfie return home after eight years in Germany. Coming up, the Mystery House has a garden with a difference. At least I haven't got to cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> and the mind boggles at one of Britain's miniature villages. And then we have the model of the model of the model, and we've got the model of the model of the model. Have you really? Well, wonderful reactions from both Peter and Alfie in yesterday's second property. So much so that we're taking a bit of a gamble with the mystery house. Now, whilst they'll both enjoy, I hope, looking around a beautifully appointed house with a minimum of three bedrooms, there are gambles. Firstly, it's in a very rural location. And whilst Peter might get plenty of outside space with this property, he'll also get plenty of trees. On the way to the mystery house, you know it's going to be a bit different. It's going to challenge you in some way. <laughs> if we're going to show you something quirky or a bit different, Peter, what would be a good style for you to see? Um, quirky or different to me would be, I don't know, some sort of uh, conversion of some large building where it had really high roofs and lots of space and things. That would be quirky. And It's all about the space for you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, space Still. is most important for me. Yeah. And outside, you know, again, Bigger is better? Um, I've got no problem with size, actually. If it's bigger, then fine. I, it doesn't worry me at all. Alfie worries that if I die, who's going to cut the grass? But I thought that they'd just buy a garden. Well, let's try and stay garden. positive this morning, shall we? <laughs> For our mystery house, we're heading back over the border into Gloucestershire and to the small village of Sapperton. The closest amenities are in Oak Ridge, around three miles away, which has a church, a pub and a post office. Style-wise, I think our third house delivers. But as far as location is concerned, it's very rural. And Alfie in particular wanted to be able to walk into a town or a large village. I'm just hoping our mystery property, with its spiritual pedigree, will enlighten our buyers. The mystery property is a religious affair. OK. Or well, mm -hmm. used to be. This was accommodation for farm workers locally. Uh -huh. And then the local squire decided in, let me get the dates right, in the 19th century to build this chapel next door, a Wesleyan chapel, so Methodist. Mm -hmm. like. okay. And then... It all became one much later on, and there's a, a 1970s extension just to the other side, so it's actually quite a lot of accommodation. Uh -huh. Really? Oh, okay. It does look interesting. Good. It really does. Well, one thing you did say, you, you, when you said, oh, you know, I like the idea of, you know, taller ceilings, obviously one of them <laughs> is very tall. Okay. And let's start in that room. So my prayers were answered. Yeah. <laughs> As well as its religious past, the property has been an inspirational home to various artists and sculptors, which should appeal to Alfie's creative side. First stop, the old chapel. Not a bad entrance hall. It's beautiful. It's lovely. You wanting to become more crafty, in the nicest sense of the word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's braced for that, isn't it? Yeah, nice high ceilings as well. It is. What an entrance hall, eh? Uh -huh. Should we make our way? Yeah, yes, that'll be Follow me. 
The property is arranged on various levels, and we're heading down a flight of stairs to the remainder of the reception rooms. So, lots of different areas here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's lovely. It's not a big, sprawling kitchen. No, but it's very central. It's very sort yeah. of workable. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got spare stone there for eating and things like that. No. It's a very nook and cranny kitchen, isn't it? Which some people might not like. I thought Peter might, you know, might protest about this. No, Peter doesn't no, work in a kitchen. Yeah, no, no, I could see Alfie working. <laughs> <laughs> Just need yeah. to find you somewhere to sit in my lap and wait for your food, don't exactly. we? Exactly. I can sit in the corner, don't we? Well, <laughs> you've seen obviously that lovely, you know, the, the chapel space upstairs, which yeah. could be a reception room. Yes. But you've got a couple of places down here as well. So let me show yeah. you. Okay. Now then, what do we think? Oh, yeah. It's oh, it's lovely. Nice and cosy in here. It is cosy. He's using the word cosy. Yeah, in a good way. In yeah, a positive in a good way, way, I hope. Yeah. It is. It's very nice. Yeah. No, it's, it's really done out well, I think. Whoever's renovated this has done a good job. Mm. So this is the 1970s extension. Yes. But in putting this on here, They've still managed to connect it. See the door going through there back into the dining part oh, of the kitchen. Across the dining part of the kitchen. Ah, okay. So it's open place. Yeah. It's sort of semi open place. Correct. Really. And then you've got another reception room just through there. Well, that's a nice cool. one, isn't it? It's a nice small Beautiful. one. Beautiful. Obviously, I've still got me problem with the height of the roofs and yeah. things like that and the beams, but, but the way it's done is so tasteful. It's really incredible, I think. So you'd bow your head? You would? Yeah, duck. well, you'd have to. It's a church. Yeah, quite, yeah. <laughs> The heavenly charms of the Mystery House appear to be working their magic on our buyers. A second flight of stairs leads us to another level, where there are three decent-sized bedrooms. So this is the master. OK. OK. It's nice. Nice and light, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, it's quite a, quite a big room here, in the way it's done out. Yeah. We're in the roof. A bit like in the first house, mm. but there's more room. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. squared off a bit yeah. better. Yeah. Place, yeah. No one's sweet, though. And yeah, now, it? look, next door, you've got a family bathroom. Right. OK? okay. Mm. And, but that family bathroom also needs to service the spare bedroom as well, right. which is just through there. Mm -hmm. But then you've also got another double bedroom, which is en suite. Mm -hmm. ah, OK, so you have got sort of two... Yeah. Uh, okay. Two bathrooms. Mm. So outside space, it's... It comes in a quite a different shaped package, if you like. Mm -hmm. But there's loads of it. Okay. Let me show really? you. Okay. Yeah. And that package includes a secluded terrace and paved and gravel areas surrounded by numerous shrubs. But that's not all that's on offer here. I know you want to get involved in something a, a bit more. Mm -hmm. So as it's the mystery property, we've got you a lot more. A lot more. A lot, right? You've got six acres six <laughs> of woodland. Oh, oh. Six woodland. acres? Yeah. Well, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. You know, it's, it's got to be different. <laughs> woodland. Yeah. Yes. At least I haven't got to cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Before I let you loose into the woodland, and back into the house, of course, yeah. you need to guess the price. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And it's been quite a quirky mystery house, isn't it? It has. The house is absolutely lovely. So I think I'd probably go for seven, seven sixty. Seven sixty. Yeah. Okay. Peter. Yeah, if it hadn't been for six acres, uh, uh, I think that threw me a bit. Um, um, I think I would go for seven hundred eighty-five thousand pounds. Well, Peter, you're on the money. It's on the oh. market for offers around seven hundred eighty-five thousand pounds. He's not. Hmm? This is the last thing we're seeing of all the three houses, mm. so take your time, have a good look around inside and out. I'll okay. catch you later on. OK, thank you. That's it, thank you. Well, this house, it's, you know, it had the big rooms, had the quirky feel, which I thought they might like, but, of course, whilst it might have lots and lots of land, the big gamble here was the position. On the market for £785,000, our mystery house is over budget, but the owner is open to offers, and the property requires no work. Originally a farm worker's cottage, a Methodist chapel was added in the 19th century. The accommodation includes a spacious kitchen and breakfast room, and three double bedrooms. 
As well as a rear garden, the property comes with six acres of woodland. It's weird because it's like a, a sort of um, a nook and cranny house, but it's an open plan type of nook and cranny. I've never seen anything like it. The atmosphere inside is lovely, very calming. The entrance hall was fabulous, just superbly decorated, and the, the paintings on the walls and the, the, you know, the furniture was, uh, and the tiling was out of this world. It was really excellent. I was pleasantly surprised. The location itself, I think, would be the big problem for us. It, it's just, it, it sort of feels quite isolated, and, and I think, you know, it's fine on a, a reasonable day, but on a cold, wet, rainy day, I think we'd probably feel a bit trapped inside the, the property. Well, I was wondering whether I'd see you again after going in that dark wood there with all that nature. I know. Well. <laughs> a lot of nature. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of trees as well. Yeah. Well, we're round, isn't it? Six, yeah. Eight, yes. yes. But, great house. Beautiful house. So let's find you somewhere to have a bit of a conflab, shall we? OK. okay. Let's go. Each year, around 38 million people visit the Cotswolds, and tourism is the primary industry in the area. But a century ago, pretty villages like Borton on the Water were quiet and isolated. In the 1930s, a local entrepreneur, keen to cash in on the boom in car ownership, decided to create a local tourist attraction to put Borton on the map, an exact model replica of the village itself. Commissioned by the Morris family, who owned the local pub, the model village was only the second in the country when it opened in 1937. I've come to Borton to find out more about this unique miniature world. I'm meeting the owner, Julian Atherton. Is this built to scale, then? Yeah, this is a one-ninth replica of the village of Borton on the Water. There's various discussions on why it's one-ninth. Uh, people called it the architect scale at the time, uh, because obviously you'd be an imperial, not metric, so yeah. nine is a portion of 12. Or the other rumour is that it was scaled at that to fit in the available space that they had, which is what we see the space that has been used now. I'd be deeply suspicious it was the latter. <laughs> I mean, it looks very well done. It looks built. Yeah, I mean, it is a replica rather than a model, and it was built by, by eight stonemasons who were, you know, the men that would have built the, the real houses in, in the village and done the repairs to them because they're all made of Cotswold stone. But it's weathered well. Well, yes, Cotswold stone does uh, suffer. We have to do a lot of repairs, especially the, the winter is the, the main problem because right. if it's wet and then you get some frost, the, uh, the stone it sort of explodes yes. and blows, as they call it. Uh, and so, you know, that causes a lot of wear that has to be replaced. Because of its historical and architectural significance, the miniature village was given Grade 2 listed status earlier this year, the only one in the country to receive such an accolade. To ensure its upkeep, Julian has a team of people on hand who are responsible for maintenance and repair, from stonemasons who work with scaled-down Cotswold slate to gardeners who prune the trees. I notice here, and this is something I was hoping you'd have here, you've got, you know, as this is the model village, then you have to have this model village in the model village. Absolutely. How far down that road can you go? You've got a model of a model of a model. We have. You're in the village of Borton on the Water. We're in the model village in Borton on the Water. We have the model in the model village in Borton on the Water. And then we have the model of the model of the model. And we've got the model of the model of the model. Have you really? Have you ever entertained the idea of going one step further? My eyesight's going a bit for that. <laughs> no, I bet. Although around 30 model villages are believed to have been built around the country during the last century, the majority are fictional toy towns. This is the only one that recreates a real village in miniature at a particular point in time, built by local builders using authentic materials. But now I've had my tour, it's time to get back to the real world. Well, I've got a fair idea which of the properties is coming out on top. And after a bit of thinking time, let's find out what Peter and Alfie's next move is. So, after a bit of time to think, what's your favourite property out of the three? For me, the favourite one has to be the last one, the Mystery House. Really? Yes, I dropped you. Yes! <laughs> so what was it about the Mystery House that made it your favourite, then? I think it was just the quirkiness. 
Right. The actual house, not the, the locality of it. The location wasn't very good. It was very rural, wasn't yes. it? Yes. I don't think I would feel safe there on my own. Now, Peter, is your favourite house the mystery property as well? Well, the actual quality of the mystery house I, I really liked. I, I just loved the, the, the atmosphere, the way things were laid out, the, 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 the different shapes, the, mm. the, the whole quirkiness of the, the layout. Even though I don't like low ceilings and things, that was, it was one of those things I would have compromised on, actually. Um, but it was just too far out in the country. You know, sort of miles away from anywhere and... Um, and the forest was great, but mm. Alfie would never, ever move to a place so far away from civilization. I was banking on you choosing property number two as the favourite. I, I, so. I think property number two would be, if there was any chance of buying any of them, it would be property number two, definitely. I could actually see us living in uh, property number two. Ideally, if I could take property number three, the mystery house, yeah. and place it in property number two's sort of location. environment or yeah. location, then we have everything that we want. Sure. It'd probably be way over budget as and well. Well over budget. Yeah, that would be the other thing, yeah. Well, it sounds like if property number two isn't for you, it, it's a good eight out of ten gauging your reactions. So if you come back and view some more houses, you just got to beat that, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a good benchmark for the next house that we, we look for that we like better. Well, that's good. So off back to Germany now. That's yeah. correct. Uh, yeah. So the next time you come back here to the Cotswolds, you'll be looking at houses again. Yep. Definitely. So good luck with that. And please let us know whatever you decide on, won't you? We will. We will. Definitely. So it's Auf Wiedersehen now. Yeah, yes, and Auf Wiedersehen Auf Pet. Auf Wiedersehen Pet. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Whilst we didn't find Alfie and Peter the ideal home here in the Cotswolds, we did come pretty close, and surprisingly so, with a mystery house. Now, I think even Peter was taken aback on how much he enjoyed looking around that property, especially when you bear in mind he was after big, bright living spaces. But I think one of the reasons why he enjoyed it so much was it was impeccably presented. So I think whatever property they end up settling on here in the Cotswolds, it'll be very much the finished article. So I guess let's watch this space. See you next time. If you'd like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, England or even further afield to the continent and need our help, please apply online at bbc.co.uk for... Rain.